First thing we need to do is open up our web browser and go to facebook.com forward slash insights. Now it's going to ask you if you're not logged in yet to log in and what you need to do is actually log in with the account that is either attached to the Facebook fan page that you want to have connected to your website or to your personal profile. Now once you've gone to facebook.com forward slash insight and you've actually logged in, you're going to come to a page that looks like this. Now right now the page is still loading, so we're going to wait just a moment here. Here we go. And once it's come to this page, you may not have any information connected here yet. If you have a Facebook fan page, it may be listed. Otherwise, you may see this as blank. But what we're, what we're going to do is actually click on the green button here in the upper right-hand corner called Insights for your website. Now, once I select this, it's going to bring a pop-up in the middle of the screen. And the first thing it's asking for is the domain name that I want to connect this to. So put in the name of the website that we want to have... Facebook Insights installed in. In this case, we're going to use our tutorial website. Now, in the second option here titled Link With, you've got a drop down, or you may not have a drop down. If you do, it's going to list your personal profile that you, you're logged in with, plus all the Facebook fan pages or Facebook apps that you might be connected to. If you have some options in here, this is what this means. Link with is who are you giving access to view the Facebook's insights reports. So in this case, we're going to link this to our mybizapps.net website. Who all do I want to have access to that? Well, if I have a Facebook fan page where it's myself and three other admins and maybe they're close friends or their work colleagues or even their employees and I want all of them to have access to the insights reports for this website, then I need to select the page that we're all administrators of. If I do not have any pages or I want to make sure I am the only one who can view these reports, then I'll just select myself, which is what we're going to do here. Now what this is going to do is create this meta tag that we can see in the middle. And this is the code that we're going to copy and paste into our website. So I'm going to select on this by cl left clicking on it once. It should highlight the whole thing. If not, make sure you select the whole thing. And then we're going to do control C for Windows PCs or command C for Macintosh computers, Apple computers. And then we need to open up our notepad or our text edit program, just something that we can copy and paste this code into so we can keep it for reference later. So I'm going to paste the code in there and then move it away. So that way I can go back to adding the code to my website. Now at this point, we do not need to leave this website. We actually need to leave it sitting right here. So you either need to open a new browser window, or if you've got a website, uh, web browser where you can open a new tab, just open a new blank tab. And you're gonna go to your website. But in this case, you actually need to go to where you can make the changes to your website. If you're using a tool such as WordPress, that's your administration console. console. If you're using such as Joomla or Drupal or any of the other CMS tools, then you're actually going to go to those administration consoles. If you've got a static HTML website, don't worry, I'm going to show you how we can add the code in there as well. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how this works in WordPress. So we need to log into our WordPress administration console. Once we come to the dashboard, what we're looking for is this option called appearance on the left hand side of the screen. And most importantly, the sub option called editor. Now, real quick, if you cannot see the appearance menu option or the editor option, you need to reach out to the person who built your website, either the individual, your friend, uh, a web firm, or even your hosting provider. Because what this means is you do not have administrative level access to actually make changes to your theme files, which is where we need to paste this code. Um, so you need to reach out to them and find out how you can get that access. What we're going to do right now is go ahead and click on editor. It's going to take us to the edit screen for all of the code for a website. In the upper right hand corner, the select theme to edit, we want to make sure we are selecting the theme that we're currently using for a website. You may only have one option, you may have three or four options, but make sure you're using the one for your website. If you're not sure which one that is, you can either reach out to the person who built your website and make sure that uh, you know what option you're using. Or a quick way, if you do have the appearance menu, is click on the themes options. And the very first one is going to tell you what you're currently using. So current theme 2011. That's the one my website's using. 
So I'm going to go back to the editor, make sure 2011 is selected, which it is. Now the file that we need to paste this code into is called the header file, file name header.php. So I'm going to select that file, which loads it up here in the middle. And then what I need to do is to paste this code in the appropriate place. So what I'm looking for is anything before the closing head tag. Well, here's the opening head tag. Here's actually some meta tags right here. You can actually see that it start with the word meta and that's what we're pasting in. So what I can actually do is take my code, I'm gonna bring it back over from my notepad program, select the whole thing, copy, come in here, click after the last meta tag, hit my enter key to create a new line and then control V or command V as in victory for Macintosh computers and that will paste the code in there. If I do not see any of these meta tags, what I'm looking for is to paste this code before I get to what's called the closing head tag, which is right here. It looks like a forward slash with the word head afterwards. As long as I paste the code anywhere before there, it'll function correctly. If you paste it afterwards, it'll actually show up on your website. So make sure you don't do that. Anything before this closing head tag. So I've got my code that I've pasted up here at the top. I'm going to hit the update file button. Now it's going to show me that the file was edited successfully, but I'm not done yet. What I need to do is go back to Facebook. I've got my tab still saved here. You may have it in another browser window and I need to click on the get insights button. This actually completes the connection between facebook.com and my website. So you see now it says you may access your insights and brings me to the initial report. Now, what you can see right now, obviously there's no data that's been imported yet. You need to give a good 24 to 48 hours before you see any content or any data start to show up in your reports. However, once you've logged in, you can always come back to your insights reports by going to facebook.com forward slash insights. Now you can see this is gonna give you some great data in terms of how your content is being distributed across Facebook. We're gonna see everything from likes to shares, to total impressions, how many times people have actually viewed that on Facebook. So if you got blog posts, you can actually track once they're shared on Facebook by anyone, how many people have seen that, how far it's gone, and even how many likes that's driven. So this is a very valuable tool to show you how your website and your content is performing on Facebook. If you've got any questions or you had any problems with this tutorial, feel free to drop us a comment below. And again, this is a tutorial by newmediaworkshop.tv.